Hello, this is George Simonoff, and I'd like to take a few minutes here and make a quick video on how to use a lean approach to implement your plan maintenance work process. I think that when you look at maintenance and reliability, a lot of the things that we have going on are processes and people, and using the lean tool set is a great way for eliminating waste and improving uh, the activities that, that lead us to success. Okay? So, this is an example that I've used many times in a lot of different facilities, starting out with just defining what it is we're after, right? And the first step is always define the as-is maintenance work process, um, identify where the opportunities for waste are, and then go ahead and start to identify some of the next three or four next steps that we need to go do and improve, okay? One thing that I can't say stress enough is that it's so important to have a good facilitator Somebody that knows how to facilitate a group because this particular activity can be very long. There's a lot of detailed steps. You gotta make sure you catch the details because, of course, as you know, the devil's in the details. Right? Um, so a little bit of the pre-work, right? And this is the pre-work around the lean tools. Um, understand what good looks like. You can do this pre-work beforehand um, where you teach the, the eight wastes or seven wastes, as most folks know. Here we use eight wastes. And uh, the, you know, the eighth one being the unutilized talent, underutilized talent. I would make sure that there's education around what a good process should look like, what's the value of planning and scheduling, what's the value of kidding components, what's the value of identifying work early, you know, and some of that stuff. So the other pre work also includes it could be like a reliability assessment, uh, like a snapshot of where you're at current state, and, and also in some of that pre work is who do you need in that room. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you got a cross-functional team within the room to make sure that you know, the folks that are touching the process are also the folks that are helping you map it and you're bringing them along for that journey as well. Now, you know, just a little bit about the waste and what the value was. I won't spend a lot of time on these slides here. Um, and a little bit about the waste. And here you can see the seven. Um, and then underutilized talents missing out of that group, which, which we like to use the company that I'm at. Uh, but then we get into like the agenda and, and what we did around mapping the Kaizen, right? We spent a lot of time, like I said, on education and map the process. And mapping a process typically is a day and a half, right? So you can you can take it in smaller chunks, you know, involve only the teams that need to be there at the time, uh, say like the materials folks or whoever's doing your kidding, uh, and then even some of the operators as you start to identify how work requests are created or ding calls. But then, you know, make sure that you're mindful with breaks and time because it can be very lengthy uh, doing this. And it's tough to keep everybody, you know, engaged during this time, right? And you'll see in some, you know, next slides what it looks like when you map it out, right? Identify the waste, you know, after you've done the training. Um, maybe do some root cause analysis if necessary. You'll see that we did that in this one. And then go ahead and use some of those lean tools to brainstorm and prioritize actions, okay? And then a Kaizen newspaper or like a tracking sheet that you use to track progress and make sure that the action items are completed afterwards. Uh, you know, as is mapping, you know, we mapped five different processes in this, what we call DIN calls, which are like maybe uh, production line calls or breakdown calls. Do it now is what it stands for. System generated preventive maintenance or PMs. Uh, the PM follow-ups, you know, activities or corrective work that's coming from a, from a PM itself, work requests, and then, and then the shoulder taps, right? Which is a little bit different than DIN calls. DIN calls got some, some process, you know, defined around it. Here's some examples of what we do with the as-is mapping. I like to use a brown paper and, uh, and, and map it out with the post-it notes because you'll see that if you don't use the post-it notes and try to draw it out, um, you're going to look at it, look at it again, and by the time you get all everyone's feedback into it, you're going to be moving these notes around and missing details. Now, when you're doing the mapping, you know, I would suggest that you get somebody that um, understands how to do the process mapping and make sure that you don't miss the detail, right? And the detail down to, I take this paper and I hand it to this person or I put it in this basket. Okay, and then what happens to it next, right? Because that's the kind of detail that, that really... Um, you know, adds the waste in your processes, right? And uh, and you'll see here, like right here, you can see PMs and the follow-ups, and then the DIN call process. You can see how lengthy the DIN call process is. And I think this is pretty common where a lot of folks put a lot of effort into managing the firefighting more effectively. 
and really the goal ought to be is to reduce the firefighting because it's by far the most resource intensive and the most costly. Now here's another example, you know, we did the work requests and then we tried to map the shoulder taps, but the thing with the shoulder taps is that, you know, when you get some kind of plan or you got some kind of course of action in play, it's really tough to map it out because it's all over the place, right? And we chose not to map out the shoulder taps, but what we did is we decided to map out some of the causes as to why the shoulder taps happen. And you'll see that in the next slide here. Um, waste identification, reliability work process, like we went through and we identified where the wasteful steps are in this. And we use those orange tabs so you can see by all the orange post-it notes, that's everywhere that we identified that there's waste in the process or somewhere that you know, we have an opportunity to improve the process itself. Now, remember again, we didn't try to define a process from scratch. We mapped the as-is and then the, the, the goal is to improve the as-is to make it look more towards what the 2B should look like, right? And it may come in multiple iterations. You may do this maybe once a year when you have uh, time down where you can get folks in a room and it gets easier because then you can kind of review the maps that you have and then look at the changes you made, do some kind of plan, do, check, act around the changes that they worked the way that we wanted to, um, and, then, and then move on and build upon that from there. Here, you know, talk a little bit that we couldn't map the shoulder tap processes. Uh, because it reprioritizes on every level, it cuts out planning, which you know, most of you folks know this very well, and it creates a lot more reactivity than what we currently have. So I'll show you the next slide here. We talked a little bit about what the root causes were, and this is all, you know, not only mapping the process, but a lot of education to the team that's in there. And, and if you do this event right, you come out with a lot of people that have a very strong uh, gut around what does good look like, what is a proactive value, you know, what's it add to the operations and to the business, um, and, and how damaging shoulder taps can be, right, and DIN calls. As you can see here, uh, failure to deliver doesn't uh, call a DIN man first, a uh, lack of upfront planning, and these root causes might look different in your facility, but this is what the group ought to be giving you to understand what are these root causes, why do we get the shoulder taps, so you can start to improve the process from there. Uh, when we came up with what we thought the actions were after we mapped out the waste and we talked about some potential root causes, we came up with a list of improvements that we thought we needed to make on it, right? It was a brainstorm list, and we used this pick chart or a two-by-two two matrix, and you may hear some people call it, but it's really around a level of difficulty to implement versus um, the level of um, benefit that you get out of it, right, which is called payoff in this chart here. So it was a group exercise for us to take, which you'll see in the next slide, all of the suggested actions to implement. And then as a team, we went through and prioritized which one of these quadrants we thought they fell into. And then here's the, um, here's the list itself that we came up with with this particular Kaizen event. And you can see here, we, we rated those. Once we put them into the blocks, we went through and we kind of rated them. What we thought was a level of imp implement or level of impact versus the difficulty to implement these things. And you can kind of see here, there were four actions that kind of bubbled up to the top, right? And these four are gonna be different for whatever company you're in as far as how difficult is it to dedicate a person to a particular activity, you know, which you can see here uh, in the top four here, dedicated planner and some dedicated lubrication off the maintenance team. Now, in this particular situation, those things were very easy to go implement. So those made it up towards the top of the list. and then kind of prioritized on our way down, right? And then, and then, like I said, the Kaizen newspaper was really around who's doing what, um, who are these tasks assigned to, to to go execute, and you kind of see here what we define as far as the next steps goes out of this Kaizen event, right? So, and I think this is the last slide I have. This is a great tool to use. It's a great way to engage folks. I think some of the watch outs in this tool, I'll just review them real quick again, is make sure you do your homework, you get the right folks in the room uh, that, that can either make the decisions or play a part or have some role within the process. Uh, be mindful as to how you have folks coming in and out of the room, uh, like the production folks or say the procurement folks that may handle a lot of your kidding or procurement. Um, you know, if to have them there the entire time, you're just going to lose those folks, you know, the maintenance folks and those are going to be the guys that need to be there most of the time, but you got to make sure you keep it lively, break it up, and, and make sure that you pay attention to the detail of the steps because the devil's really in the detail, right? It's no different than data quality and any other aspect where we handle it. If 
you do with the right level of detail, you get a great roadmap to, to build and implement off of. Okay, my name is George Simonoff. Uh, you can reach me uh, through, through YouTube or through my contact information if you have any further questions. I think this is a presentation I'm going to work on a little bit more and maybe present at one of the conferences coming up because I think this is a great share and an easy way for a lot of folks to implement and improve their work processes.